Bruchem Aboim. Thank you very much for coming. Again, we are on the Gematria series. And um, today we're going to talk about the number 40, which in Hebrew is called Mem. Now, the letter Mem is the 13th letter in the Hebrew alphabet. It has a numerical value of 40. 40 is, as people know, is connected to the concept of conception. After 40 days, an a, a embryo takes on a definitive form. Uh, it has a heartbeat and becomes a fetus. Parents are able to request that God change the designated gender of their baby only up to the 40th day, but not later. So on the 40th day, the embryo has reached a sufficient stage in its development so that now halakhically, it is actually classified as a children, as, as a child, pardon me, as a person. Now the letter, the number mem, has two forms. One open and the other closed. The open mem is used anywhere in a word, and the closed mem is only used at the end of a word. The open mem is made up of a chaf and a vav. Chaf has numerical value of 20, vav 6, together again, numerical value of 26, which alludes to God's ineffable name of mercy. The closed mem alludes to God being the supreme ruler of the four directions of the universe. Now the open mem is an allusion to the open and revealed parts of God's glorious actions and his Torah, what's called nigla. The closed mem is an allusion to the celestial realm and the hidden parts of his Torah, something referred to as nistar. There are certain words that contain both, open and closed mems, such as the word rachamim, mercy. The constant outpouring of blessing from his open hand is connected to the open mem, and the closed mem is an expression of him, God Almighty, mercifully holding back his din, his strict justice. There are other words that begin with an open mem and end with a closed mem. For example, the word makom, place, this is also one of God's names. As we see in the Pesach HaGadah, Baruch HaMokom, Baruch Hu, we say. Blessed is the place, blessed is he, again, that the, this alludes to God, Mokom. As we say, that God is, the, is not in the world, the world is within God. He is the Mokom. He is everything. The open mem alludes to the fact that he is perceived through the magnificent universe which he created, which is full of his glory. Yet in the end, we need to know that God remains unknowable, invisible, and completely hidden beyond the ability of our human brains to comprehend. And this is why when we experience events that are beyond our understanding, such as consoling the mourner, what we say when we refer to God as Baruch HaMokom, we say, HaMokom Yenachem Eschem, Betok Shavar Shalayim, that may God come for you among the mourners of Israel, the word Mokom. Now the word ends with the final mem, makom, since not even the angels know his place, as it says in Osios to Rabbi Akiva, that even the heavenly hosts approach each other with the question, aye makom kavodo, where is the place of his glory? Another word that begins with an open mem and ends with a closed one is the word mayim, water. The word mayim, water, is also an allusion to Torah. As the Talmud Bavakama 82a states, Ain Mayim el Torah, that there is no water except for Torah. The Mishnah, the oral law of the Torah, begins with an open mem. Me'im Asai, from Korin the Shema, from when do we begin reading the Shema Yisrael in the evening? And it concludes with the word, Ba Shalom, in peace. Again, with a closed mem. The open mem alludes to water that openly descends from heaven into the earth where it is hidden from sight. There it nurtures plants and trees and causes them to grow. So we can see the concept of nigla and hester connected to open and closed mems with the yud of mayim in the middle representing chokma ilah, supernal intellect. The yud also alludes to both the gematria of ten, the ten commandments, and the ten spherot, the attributes that God has taken upon himself to create this world. The open mem is an allusion to a flowing stream, whereas the closed mem, an allusion to an underground fountain. Water also represents humility, since it continuously seeks to descend to the lowest plane or energy level. 
even when freezing. The liquid water descends below the solid ice, as is also reflected in one of the basic miracles of creation, which is stretching the dry land over the waters. In the process of creating a baby, the baby is surrounded by water in the mother's womb. The whole world is dependent upon rain and drinking water. Most of the world is covered by water. Also, approximately 90% of the human body is actually consists of water. Natural streams of water are referred to as Mayim Chaim, living water, a recognition of water's essential role in sustaining life. Now, when Yaakov Avinu, Yaakov our father, took his family down to Egypt, to Mitzrayim, a word that begins with a mem, an open mem, and ends with a closed mem, to allude to the fact that the Jews were initially open, welcomed to Egypt and free to come and go as they pleased. But in the end, the, to the closed men, they were trapped and closed in and forced into involuntary servitude with no chance of escape. Now, there are many examples of the number 40 in Torah. The Luchot, the tablets of which the Ten Commandments were written, weighed 40 saw. The Tanchuma states that Moshe's staff also was made of sapphire and weighed 40 saw. The Torah states the one who was punished with malchut, with stripes, lashes, receives 40 lashes. In reference to the 39 major prohibitive acts on Shabbat, the mission in Shabbat states, 7-2, the primary labors are 40 minus 1. It's said that Rabsodic fasted for 40 years in an attempt to avert the destruction of the Holy Temple, based on the Gemara and Gittin, 56a. It's also mentioned in the Bab Metzia 88a that Rabbi Yosef fasted for 40 years so that his descendants would never, never forget the Torah. There were four individuals that lived to the age of 120 and, these, and had three different 40-year periods in their lives. Moshe, Hillel, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, and Rabbi Akiba. Talmudic scholars would review their studies a minimum of 40 times. The age of 40 is when man attains the, uh, the, uh, the at age of Bina, understanding. The blessings of Birchat HaTorah that are recited before and after a public reading of the Torah are composed of exactly 40 words. The transmission of the Torah from Moshe to Rav Ashi, who edited the Talmud Bavli, spanned 40 generations. The appropriate period for tshuva, repentance, begins with the first day of Elul and continues until Yom Kippur, 40 days. There is a universal custom to immerse oneself in a mikvah, heir of Yom Kippur. The word mikvah begins with a mem, and a mikvah, a valid mikvah, must have a minimum volume of at least 40 saw. Yonah the prophet, uh, with Yonah and the whale, famous story, told the people of Nineveh that they had a period of 40 days to repent before God would destroy the city. When Moshe sent the spies, to reconnoiter the land of Canaan. They were gone for 40 days. After the sin of the spies, the children of Israel were sentenced to travel to wander in the desert for 40 years, one year for each day that spies traveled to the land of Israel. Every letter in the Hebrew alphabet can be found both large and small somewhere in Tanakh. The first letter of Mishle, the book of Proverbs, has a large mem. Before starting to write the book, Shlomo Melech, King Solomon, fasted for 40 days to attain the spiritual level of Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, our teacher, when he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights on the mountain to receive the Torah from God Almighty. The daily burnt offering was sacrificed and placed, al mukta on the fireplace of the altar, by Yikra 6.2. In, in the word mukta, the mem is written small to teach us that ecstasy in serving God should burn in our heart, but not be exhibited in public based on the Kotzke Rebbe. Both Dovra Melech and Shlomo Melech reigned for 40 years. Yirmiyahu was a prophet for 40 years. Yitzchak married Rivka when he was 40 years old, as did Asa, his son, when he married his first two wives. The Gemara in Sota 2a states, that 40 days before the birth of a child, 
a heavenly voice calls out, the daughter of so-and-so will marry so-and-so, a beshert. According to one opinion in the Talmud and Tainus 4.5, the period of Mashiach, the Redeemer, will last for 40 years. It may come quickly in our time. Moshe was on Mount Sinai for three different times, each time for a period of 40 days and 40 nights. Reish Lachich repeated his studies 40 times corresponding to the 40 days that Moshe spent on the mountain to receive the Torah. One of the proofs that the two tablets were written by the hand of God was that the letter, finer letter Mem, then the donut in the center of the Mem was suspended. It did not fall out. When God brought the flood during the time of Noah, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. May God bless us with Bina, understanding, to be able to overcome the obstacles that prevent us from experiencing the coming of Mashiach, Sikenu, may he come quickly and in our time. Thank you very much for coming. God bless and be well. And again, Shabbat Shalom. And again, Achag Kosher V'Sameach. God bless you all. Thank you.